All right. So uh, for the first conference serve other algorithm, that's the very first algorithm that we're going to be dealing with. It's actually non-preemptive. What does it mean to be uh, non-preemptive? Again, non-preemptive. It means that as soon as the process starts uh, uh, processing, there is nothing that will stop it. Of course, again, assuming that the process is uh, fully CPU uh, uh, bound, so it doesn't ask for an I/O. Regardless whether it's preemptive or non-preemptive, if a process asks for an I/O, okay, it will leave the processor and go for the waiting state. Even if it's non-preemptive, yes. Even if it's non-preemptive, okay. That's the only case that the non-preemption, uh, uh, you know, will let the process stop and move somewhere else, okay? So the non-preemptive uh, algorithm, any non-preemptive algorithm will continue processing, you know, with the, like, you know, getting the process uh, 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 being executed. Uh, and nothing will stop it except for the, we're asking for an I.O. And the problem that I'm going to be solving here, the assumption is that all processes are CPU bound, 100% uh, uh, CPU, according to my definition. Um, here you will find, uh, you know, this table, you have three processes with the three burst times. It works first in, first out. So the assumption is P1 came before P2 and then P2 came before P3, or they arrived in the same time, but in this sequence, okay? So if you see here, uh, time zero, P1 will start working all the way until 24. Why? Because the burst is 24. So when it starts at zero, it will finish at 24, as you can see. And then you have P2 with the burst of three. So P1 will finish at 24. This means that P2 will work from 24 to 27. Why? Because the burst of 20 P2 is 3. Okay, and then P3 also has a burst of 3. So in this case, uh, P3 will work from 27 to 30. If you look at this, <clears throat> what is the waiting time here of P1 didn't wait at all, right? Look. P1 arrived at time zero and started working all the, uh, uh, like, you know, right away. Okay, we don't want to do that visually. Let's apply mathematics. Mathematics never lie. Here it is. Finish minus arrival minus burst. So what, when did it finish P1? Let's see. Finish at time 24. Let's put here 24. When did it arrive? Time zero. Okay. What did the burst of P1? 24. Okay. So 24 minus zero minus 24, that would give you zero. That's the waiting time. How about the response time? What is the response time? It's the start, the very first start minus the arrival. Okay, P1 started at time 0 and arrived at time 0. So this is going to be 0 minus 0, it will be a 0. Okay, rule of thumb, assuming that the processes that you have is a CPU bound with my definition, so no I.O. whatsoever, this means that if the process is um, 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 uh, CPU bound and the algorithm is non preemptive the waiting time will always equal the response time. Okay? Well, let me give you a more concrete rule. If the process starts one time and finishes, okay, if it starts one time and finishes, then the waiting time and the response time are the same. Okay? So this is the first time. You can do that for the second and the third, and you get the average and the, the average waiting time, the average response, and so on. All right. 
Let me now give you another example because that's not good enough. All right, and um, uh, let's get it with arrivals and so on. So here, let's come here. Now what we're going to be doing is uh, adding some arrival times, okay, different arrival times, which is very important, okay, and um, um, uh, solve it accordingly, okay. So assume here that you have this Okay, whatever. Yeah. You have here process one. That's the process. Here is arrival. And here's burst. So here is the arrival and here are the burst. Here's P1, P2, P3, and P4. The arrival, let's say here, is 7. Um, uh, the burst here is 10. P2 arrived at time 8 with a burst of 2. P3 arrived at time 12 with a burst of 5. P4 arrived at time 14. Uh, uh, sorry, 43 with a burst of whatever, uh, 5. Okay? So <clears throat> uh, let's uh, put the GAN chart or the time uh, diagram here. Here it is. So from time zero to time eight, the CPU is absolutely idle. Okay. From time eight, uh, sorry, uh, time seven. I'm sorry about that. Here, yeah. time seven. Here, time seven. It's either from zero to seven. At seven, we have an arrival here, okay? P1 with a burst of 10. So the algorithm here is first come, first serve. Who came first? P1. So P1 gets served first. So it's gonna work from seven to 17. P1 finishes, okay? Then, at time 17, I have P2 already there. So uh, P2 arrives at time 8, so here is the 17, and the burst is 2, so it's going to be working from 17 to 19. That's P2. Here you go. And P2 is done. At time 19, you have P3 in the system because P3 arrives at time 12, right? So uh, uh, at time... 19, you will process P3 with a burst of 5, which is here is going to end at 24. P3 is done. Then um, uh, the next arrival, which is P4, is going to be 34. So from 24 all the way until 34, the CPU is idle. And then from 24, I have a burst of 5, which will make it from... <clears throat> 34 all the way until 39, that's P4, and P4 is done. Okay, so if you want to take some um, uh, statistics, let's first get the weighting. Okay, so weighting of P1, response of P1, weighting for P2, response of P2, weighting of P3, a response of P3, and weighting of P4, a response of P4. Um, the equation here, it could be, because this is non-preemptive, I can calculate it with one of two equations for the waiting time. Either the start minus the arrival, which is also the equation of the response time, or the finish 
minus the arrival minus the burst. Okay, this equation will work all the time whether the system is primitive or not. Okay, so the weighting of P1 is like this. I'll apply the second equation, finish. When did it finish? P1, 17. When did it arrive? 7. Okay, what is the burst? 10. So this means the weighting here is 0. Okay, how about the response time of P1? When did it arrive? Time 7. When did it start? 7. So 7 minus 7, that would also be a 0. Rule of thumb, if the, if the schedule is non-preemptive, they will always be the same. The waiting time and the response time. Let's see for P2. The waiting time of P2. The finish, P2 is 19. The arrival of P2 is um, 8. Right? And the burst is 2. So the waiting time here is 9. How about the response time? Well, it started at time 19, right? It, uh, sorry, P2 started at time 17, and it arrived at time 8. It's also 9. See, they are the exact same value, even though you're using different uh, equations. Let's see for P3. P3 finishes at time, look at here, 24. So it finishes at 24, okay? P3 arrives at 12. The burst is 5. So this is going to be 12, 7, right? 12, 24 minus 12, that's 12 minus 5, that's a 7. The response time of P3, when did P3 start? 19. When did it arrive? 12. That would also be... 7. See, I'm using different equations. I get the same result. All right. How about P4? P4. The finish time is, what is this? 30. I can't read. Oh, 39. So this is 39. The finish. Okay. The arrival is of P4, 34. The burst is 5, so the waiting time is 0. How about the response? The start time is 34. The arrival time is 34. That's also a 0. Why is it 0? Because there was an idle time before it, do you see? So as soon as it arrived, it started right away. So here is the responses and the waiting time of uh, each and every one of the uh, processes. Now, let's get the... Uh, turnaround time and the turnaround time can be calculated as follows the finish minus arrival so the turnaround time of P1 P2 turnaround time of P3 turnaround time of P4 Let's see, P1 finished at time 17, arrived at time 7. So the turnaround is 10. And you can see that the turnaround here is the burst of the process, which means there is no waiting at all. Came, started, and finished, and left. P2, P2, <coughs> if you look at the table, Okay, P2, uh, the finish time of the P2 is 19. Okay, and the arrival time of P2 is uh, 8. So the, the turnaround here is 11. How about P3? P3, the arrival is 20, uh, sorry, the finish is 24. 24. The arrival is um, uh, 12. So the turnaround is 12. The, for P4, 
The um, arrival is 34, the um, uh, finish is 39, so that would be 39 minus 34, that would give you a turnaround time of 5. When the turnaround time is equal to the burst, this means the process will, didn't, you know, there's no delay, there's no waiting, it started right away, and the response is zero. The turnaround can also, uh, uh, you know, show you the response time. All right, now, uh, how about the CPU utilization? Look at this graph here. The CPU utilization is the time when the CPU is actually working, which is the sum of bursts divided by the total time. What is the total time? 39. Okay, so you have the CPU, I'm sorry, I'll write it here. CPU utilization is 10 plus 2 plus 5 plus 5, 10 plus 2 plus 2 plus 5. What are those? Burst, burst times, okay? Divided by 39, which is, um, um, that would be 19 divided by uh, 39. So this is almost 50%. This is almost 50% utilization. Okay, how about the throughput? The throughput is also the sum of the, um, um, the um, bursts divided by the time that would give you about half a process, half a process, uh, 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 a unit. Okay, so this is how we get the measures. Those, this is the analysis of the first come, first serve. The next video, I'm going to be solving shortest job first.